Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines. Activists denounce Germany-Namibia agreement on Herero Nama genocide. Colombians mark one month of protests as government deploys military in Kali. Mali's constitutional court declares Colonel Asimi Goita as the interim president. And in our video section, we take a look at the lack of vaccine access for Afro-Brazilian communities. In our first story, the Owa Herero and Namakua have rejected a reconciliation agreement between Germany and the Namibian government. Germany formally recognized the colonial era genocide of the Herero and Nama people on May 28th. The foreign ministry further announced a 1 billion, 1.1 billion euro package for reconstruction and development. However, as per reports, this sum will be paid over 30 years. The statement also clarified that no legal claims for compensation could be derived from this. The agreement will now have to be ratified by both countries' parliaments. Community leaders and activists have condemned this agreement since it does not provide reparations. As reported by the Namibian, they have argued that the aid money should go to the community's traditional authorities and not the government. The Owa Herero Genocide Foundation and the Nama Traditional Leaders Association also handed a petition to the government on May 28th. Following an uprising in January 1904, German colonizers forced the Herero people into the Omaheke Desert. The Nama people were subjected to the same shortly after. They were left there to starve and die, while those who survived were placed in concentration camps. They were subjected to sexual violence, forced labor and medical experiments. Between 1904 and 1908, German colonial forces killed an estimated 65 to 80,000 Herero people. Around 10,000 to 20,000 Nama and an unconfirmed number of San people were also killed. The Owa Herero Genocide Foundation and the Owa Herero and Nama traditional authorities have now launched a petition. They have demanded full reparations to be paid to the descendants of victims. They have rejected the so-called reconciliation agreement and have demanded that Germany recognize its responsibility towards the genocide as per international law. In our next story, tens of thousands of people took to the streets of Colombia on May 28th to mark one month of the national strike. The landmark day was marked by demonstrations, rallies and cultural events. Indigenous communities who have continued to organize Mingas also held rallies across several departments. Protests were held across different locations in Bogota, including the bus station now renamed Resistance Portal. However, police forces began attacking protesters late in the evening. Colombia Informa also reported that there had been an electricity blackout in the area. As of 2 a.m. local time, at least 80 people had been injured. Police also deployed tear gas and stun grenades in the Santada department, targeting protesters, medics and journalists. Police brutality has increased as the state has continued to call the protesters vandals, terrorists and members of illegal armed groups. Violence has been particularly severe in the city of Kali, which has emerged as the epicenter of the strike. At least three people were killed during the protests on Friday. The organization also verified reports of armed men in civilian clothing fired at protest, firing at protesters. Attorney General Francisco Barboza claimed that one such agent was allegedly killed after firing at civilians. Following this, President Ivan Duque announced the deployment of the military to the city on Friday. An additional 7,000 personnel, including the Navy, will be deployed to remove road blockades. Meanwhile, talks between the government and the National Strike Committee stalled following the announcement of a pre-agreement. The government claimed that it was because protest leaders had refused to condemn the road blockades. As per reports, negotiations will now resume on May 30th. We now go to Mali where the constitutional court has named Colonel Asimi Goita as the country's interim president. Goita, who was already serving as the vice president, seized power after a coup on May 24th. The crisis began following a cabinet reshuffle on Monday, which saw the removal of two soldiers from the transnational government. President Ba Ando and Prime Minister Mokhtar Rouhani were then detained by soldiers and taken to the Kati military base. They were released on Thursday after they resigned. Meanwhile, Goita declared himself president on Wednesday, accusing the head of state of trying to sabotage the transition. He stated that he was not consulted about the cabinet reshuffle. This is Mali's second coup in nine months. Goita also led the, led the coup last year, which ousted President Ibrahim Babakar Keita. This is following mass protests in the country against alleged corruption in the presence of French troops. A new transition government was set up in September, composed of both civilian and military leaders. It is a mandate of 18 months with fresh elections scheduled to be held in February 2022. The military has had a heavy influence over the government and controls key portfolios including defence and security. Colonel Goita announced on New Friday that a new Prime Minister would be named within the next few days. He has also claimed that the elections will be held as planned. And for our final story, we take a look at the ongoing COVID-19 crisis in Brazil. The Health Ministry reported over 49,700 new cases within 24 hours on May 28th. Nearly 460,000 people have died so far. President Jair Bolsonaro's mishandling of the crisis has led to severe shortages in oxygen, ICU beds and other supplies. While the government has now expanded its vaccination campaign, some priority groups are still struggling with vaccine access. Among these are the Afro-Brazilian Kilambolak people. 
The National Coordination of the Black Rural Kilambola Communities had requested to be included as a priority group last year. However, they have pointed to the continued lack of government planning in terms of supplies and distribution. Here is a video feature from our friends at Brazil de Fato on this issue. The Kilambola communities were guaranteed the right to be in the priority groups for immunization against COVID-19. Due to being vulnerable to the effects of the novel coronavirus, it is recommended that Kilambolas be vaccinated inside their territories. However, in the state of Pará, they reported the vaccination campaign is full of flaws. On the municipality of Monju, we had to file a motion with the public ministry because the municipal administration had a few vaccination posts and people would have to travel for their communities on public transport or school buses in order to be vaccinated in these places. Faced with the Monju case, members of Quilombola associations called on the public ministry of the state of Pará to intervene and a task force was created after the complaints. The mayor's office affirmed that it has already made changes to the immunization campaign so that Quilombolas wouldn't have to commute in order to get the vaccine. Nevertheless, Quilombola leaders say that many have still not received any doses of the inoculation in the state. The amount of vaccines that the state government is sending to the municipalities isn't enough to cater to the entire Quilombola population of certain towns. Another issue is that we don't have populational data on the Quilombolas, and the health ministry is basing its efforts on information that, in our opinion, is unrealistic. This process of struggle by the communities continues to be arduous. The communities are still demanding more information in many municipalities. A task force was created to monitor the vaccination proceedings in the state, but we still don't have palpable results for this group. But we hope that this will generate a response and a certain expediency in the proceedings. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back on Monday with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.